Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to get started with passive information gathering. More specifically, we're going to be talking about who is and what data we can gather from who is. So uh, just to give you a basic introduction, what is who is? Well, who is essentially a query and response protocol that uh, that gives you registrant information for any particular internet property and that could be a domain or an ip block so let's say let's take a simple example let's say you want to register or buy a domain and uh, let's take a simple example let's say i want to buy the domain alexisahmed.com that's my personal name so let's say i want to buy the domain i would go to a domain registrant or registrar company like uh, namecheap like um, let's see godaddy and I would search for the domain. They would tell me, hey, this, this domain is available. Do you want to buy it? I would say yes. And then they would ask for my personal information. Uh, you know, and that is the information that you can get from who is. Now, this, again, as I said, applies to also, also applies to IP blocks or the owners of IP, IP, IP blocks, which by now are pretty much going to be owned by all the ISPs. That being said, uh, we can take a simple example here. If I open up my uh, search engine here and I type in, uh, I just type in who is, you can see we have tons of online tools that allow us to query this information. So there we are. You can see it's a who is domain lookup and uh, I can I can type in my website, for example. So I can say hsploit.com and that gives me information about my domain. So it tells me the domain uh, is the domain name and then, of course, the registrar, which is namechip.inc. Uh, uh, when it was registered on, when it expires, uh, uh, when it's updated, etc. So you can use ton of these online tools. However, I want to cover the Whois utility, which comes pre-installed in most Linux distributions, uh, as well as Windows, I believe. And on Kali Linux, you have you have it all ready to go. All right. So the the main objective of this video is to explain what information, what important information you can gather from uh, the Whois uh, database or the using the who is uh, protocol here because that's as i said what it is it's a request and response protocol that actually queries the database in regards to a registrar or registrant information so if i say who is hsploit.com and i hit enter you can see it gives me all information regarding this particular domain which is an internet resource all right so let me tell you the important information that attackers look for so firstly, they're trying to look for an email, a useful email that they can use that's somehow related to the owner. They're also looking for the owner name. And uh, through that, they can then uh, structure or create a sphere phishing campaign or a phishing campaign that can then be used to gather more information about the target. Or they could simply just use it to build a profile on their target. So right over here, you can see for the domain, uh, you may want to steal the domain. An attacker may want to steal the domain and they look at when it's going to be expiring so that uh, during that period in which it's going to be expiring and uh, the renewal time, uh, one can actually purchase it. But that is highly unlikely, especially for larger or more, um, more respectable websites as they already have that automatically done for them. Uh, so you can see that the registrar abuse contact email, they're all given. Those can be used for social engineering attacks uh, to some degree. It also tells you the name servers, which again gives you a profile or an understanding of how your target is structured if you are targeting a website. So for example, you can see that uh, from, from, from the name servers we're able to get, you can obviously tell that I'm using Cloudflare, right? Which is Again, it, it increases the complexity of what you're going to be doing, but there we are. So you also have DNSSEC here. So DNSSEC essentially protects uh, the DNS information or the DNS records. So again, it actually tries to, uh, as best as possible, secure those records. And I'll talk about that later when we'll be talking about DNS inter interrogation. All right. So... It then gives you some uh, some a notice and some terms of use, which you can go through as well. And then, of course, it takes you to the registry domain ID, all that good stuff regarding the uh, the ex expiration date, the registrar, so name cheap. And then you have the registrant ID, which is where my information should be, right? And uh, if I did not have who is God, which is right over here, who is God is a technology or a service that essentially protects the registrant information from being leaked through 
uh, you know, publicly available information like who is here. So you can see that it would actually give you, it would actually give the owner or the the, the, the attacker the, the name of the owner of the website, their organization, their street, their city, their country, their phone, you get it. And through that, you can then, for example, get their email and then structure a social engineering attack or a phishing attack. Uh, and you can also use their mobile number as well. So again, this gives you a very basic understanding of your target if you're targeting a domain or website. If you're looking for information about uh, the owner of the website, you can also get it here. So that's a very simple video, uh, nothing too complex here. And of course, you can uh, you can actually write out the output of the whois command here. So I'll actually just pass this to my desktop and I'll say whois.txt and uh, that should output the the results of the who is query into a file and uh, i've outputted it in this case to whois.txt all right so that's going to be it for this video in the next video we'll get started with uh, other aspects of passive information gathering so that we can start building a good profile uh, of our target and then we'll finally take a look at the automated tools like multigo and other frameworks so that's going to be it for this video and i'll be seeing you in the next video